missed an episode of your favorite podcast, choose from over a decade of content in our archives. Not just the latest episode. All free at GCNlive.com. To trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. friends greetings and welcome to the bright side your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation i'm your host pharmacist ben nutritional pharmacist from boulder colorado registered pharmacist number one two two seven five i specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system or a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, family members, workmates today as well. If you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have questions about the Longevity products, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've read something, heard something, somebody told you something about ingredients or nutrients or vitamins or minerals or a health challenge and you want clarification, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised in the program or sign up and join the bright side Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also head over to brightsideben.com, brightsideben.com and purchase products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben phone, uh, Brightside Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com. Also want to encourage you to check out my blog, pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren, my webmaster who does such a fine job with that. Also criticalhealthnews.com, my new blog with George Norrie. And if you're interested in any of the new Truth Treatment products, my Truth Skin Health products, retinol gel, 5% retinol, you guys. That's a lot of retinol, along with 25% vitamin C. All my truth formulations are made without preservatives, without fillers, without wax, without oil. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, speaking of skin, we've been talking about the skin for now a couple of months. We're going to continue talking about it, but not just skin in and of itself. Skin is representative of the entire body. The skin turns over fast. Every four to eight weeks, you've got new skin cells. So the skin's kind of a representative structure in the body. We could easily use the bones or the muscles or the pancreas or the liver as representative, but because the skin turns over so fast, it makes a perfect iconic structure, a microcosm, if you will, of the entire body. With the skin, as with everything else in the body, as with all other health issues in the body, whatever your health condition is, whatever your health challenge is, all disease is cell disease. All disease is cell disease. We say that so many times. We'll continue saying that. That's such an important idea when it comes to health. The modern medical model treats the stuff, not the cells. Your body's made up of cells and stuff. Cells and then the stuff that the cells make. That's your entire body. Cells and stuff. I use the analogy of raisin bread. Not the best analogy in the world, but it kind of gives you a picture of what I mean when I say cells and stuff. Raisins and bread. Cells and stuff. You got cells and the cells make the stuff and that's the body. If you got a, if you got a health problem, you got a cell problem, not a stuff problem. 
The stuff comes out of the cells, and the way to take care of your health issues is to work on the cells. Why don't we know this? Why doesn't medicine tell us this? Why isn't anybody making this distinction? Because medicine can't do anything at the level of a cell. It's true about the whole body and it's true about the skin. All skin issues, like all health issues, are cell issues. All skin issues are skin cell issues. Vitiligo, white patches that people get on their arms or on their body. That's a pigment cell issue. Eczema is a skin barrier issue. Psoriasis is a skin cell issue, an immune cell issue. Cancer even is a skin cell issue or sometimes a pigment cell issue in the ca case of melanoma. If you have acne, you've got a sebum cell issue or skin cell issue. They're all cells. It's all about the cell. Medicine's not going to tell you that because they can't do anything about the cell. We lose at the health game because we don't look at the body as it truly is, which is a cellular system, cells and stuff. We see the body clinically through the perspective of organs and tissues. And organs and tissues, whether you're talking about the, a, a gland or you're talking about a, a structure like the, the lungs or the spleen or, or any part of the skin, these systems only break down after the cells break down. The organ breakdown and the tissue breakdown or the, or the organ disease or the tissue disease is a manifestation of a sick cell or a, a bunch of sick cells. And no one tells us this. We are led to believe, perhaps unwittingly, perhaps unthoughtfully by medical professionals that should know better, that our health challenges are clinical challenges. That is, they're symptomatic challenges. That is, they're about numbers, they're about metrics, they're about testing. That's why when you go to the doctor, you get tested. We treat numbers, we treat metrics, we lower test scores. Nobody does anything about healing a cell because it's not a medical issue. The only thing a medical issue can do, the only thing a medical professional can do, I should say, is lower your test scores. But that's got nothing, 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 nothing to do with making a cell healthy. Lowering your cholesterol numbers isn't going to change your circulatory cells. Changing your TSH number isn't going to change the health of your thyroid cells. You can't modify a cell by modifying a diagnostic, by modifying a metric. That's all that happens when you go to a doctor's office for a chronic condition is you're going to get tested for your, you're going to get test scores. Nobody's going to think about the cells because the cell is not, doesn't listen to the medical model unless the medical model poisons it. And that's the only thing the medical model can do to a cell is poison it, shut it down, suppress it, inhibit it, block it. This is the thinking that allows these crazy medical treatments that are so absurd and so barbaric, they'd almost be comical if they weren't so tragic. This is how we lose our organs preventatively, just in case. They'll take your breasts or your uterus, just in case. This is how we allow our doctors to electrically cauterize our heart or chemically cauterize our thyroid or our heart or radiate us. They call it ablation. That means to destroy. And this is actually a, a medical treatment. You'll go to your cardiologist. He'll say, oh, you got an arrhythmia? Your heart's moving too fast? He's not going to say, well, why is your heart cell so freaked out that it can't conduct electricity the way it's supposed to? Your doctor's not going to say that. He doesn't even know about that. He's going to say, let's burn the heart to get it back into rhythm. Not let's figure out why is the cell so unhealthy that it's not conducting electricity correctly. He'll say, let's burn the heart. Or he'll say, instead of, why is the thyroid... Why is a thyroid cell so unhealthy it's not producing the thyroid hormone? Why is it not getting what it needs so it can't produce thyroxin, T4, T3, thyroid hormone? He'll say, let's poison the thyroid to force it to make more iodine or force it to make more thyroid hormone. Or if it's moving too fast, he's not going to say, why is the thyroid cell so freaked out that it can't do its business correctly that it's hyperactive? That's called hyperthyroidism. He'll say, let's radiate the thyroid. Let's take it out, God forbid. That's what they'll say. Let's take out the thyroid. The medical model is not welcome at the level of a cell, but it doesn't matter because it's our business. The medical model wants to take our power away from us and put it in the hands of the authorities. Authority means somebody's writing your story. That's what an author does. He writes a story. An authority writes our story for us. A medical authority writes our health story for us. How does that sound? Does that sound good to anybody? To have some guy write your health story for you? That's what a medical authority does. 
This whole medical model takes the power away from the cell, away from us, and puts it in the hand of somebody with a white coat who's supposed to know better than we do. Guess what? Authorities are not welcome at the level of a cell. Authorities are not welcome at the level of a cell. The cell doesn't listen to authorities unless it gets poisoned. All right, got more to say here. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about what we can do to help feed ourselves, to help nourish ourselves, to help sustain ourselves when we come back for more. All right, we're back on the bright side. Got Greg Birch from uh, the Flavors radio program on KSCO in Santa Cruz coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about food manufacturing, and we're going to talk about food processing. Greg is a chef and uh, restaurant owner. He's been involved in the manufacturing business, and he's also the host of, as I say, with his wife, Marlene Birch, of the Flavors radio show on, uh, on KSCO in Santa Cruz. We'll get to him here in the bottom of the hour. I was going to continue talking here about, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, things we can do for our skin, for dry skin. Dry skin, like all skin health issues, is a, is a cell issue. And then I want to talk a little bit about, well, a couple, a couple really cool elements in the skin. One is my all-time favorite molecule in the body, something called hyaluronic acid. A lot of you guys have heard of hyaluronic acid. A lot of women have heard of hyaluronic acid because it's in fancy schmancy skincare products, which is kind of interesting. I've been using hyaluronic acid in my formulations for a long time. But uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings about hyaluronic acid. There's a lot of misunderstandings about how to use it effectively topically. And there's a lot of non-understanding about hyaluronic acid in case, uh, when it comes to using hyaluronic acid supplements, hyaluronic acid. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And then we'll talk about another really cool molecule in the skin. And this is a molecule that's associated with, whose deficiencies are associated with dry skin and eczema. And a molecule that's got some very interesting sun protection properties. Yes, it's a built-in sunscreen of sorts, as well as a built-in moisture factor. It's very cool stuff. We'll talk about that in the coming days as we continue discussing skin health on the bright side. Okay, we'll talk to Greg Birch at the bottom of the hour. Time to hit our phones. Rose in Virginia, what's going on? Welcome to the bright side, Rose. Hi, Ben. God bless. Uh, Good thank morning. Thank you for all your kindness. I, sure. You know, we, we went to Whole Food. I hate to mention, because I, you know, I'm not trying to discredit anybody. I, That's okay. I'm grateful to Whole Food, too. Um, I got, you know, I'm trying to get this vitamin C that you mentioned. Which one? For uh, skin or for... They have, oh, let me double check. Is it for the skin or is it to take orally? Orally. Orally, so I was, you know, orally is not that difficult to get vitamin C. Just plain old ascorbic acid is good enough for most folks. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, ascorbic, and what was the other thing that you said? I, was I talking about bioflavonoids, maybe? Yeah, is that what you're Ah, yes. I got one. They only have one. I don't know why. Don't go to Whole and Foods. That, that's not a great selection. I like Whole Foods, especially if I'm traveling. But uh, don't go there for your vitamins. Go to a, a good vitamin store, and not a GNC either. They're the worst. Find a good vitamin store, like an independently owned one. Here in Colorado, we got one called Vitamin Cottage. It's independently owned. There's, they're, they're, you find them all over. You're in, you're in a big city in Virginia, I think, aren't you, Rose? Where, where do you guys live? I live in... Uh, Chantilly, that's in Fairfax County. Yeah, yeah, you, you'll find a good vitamin store there. Uh, just get ascorbic acid and then look for a bioflavonoid supplement, just plain old bioflavonoids. Of course, if you want some super deluxe bioflavonoids, go to Brightside Health Products and get my Bergamax product. I think it's on sale if you buy two or three of them, and that's got some really neat bioflavonoids in there. Uh, but if you want just generic bioflavonoids, they're available all over. You can go on Amazon and get bioflavonoids. It's not, it's very, they're inexpensive and they're very easy to find. And if you take them with the vitamin C, they'll help your vitamin C. They'll help. So hang on a second, Rose. They'll help you absorb your vitamin C if you take them with the vitamin C. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, you mentioned that you had it in your company, this uh, Bergamax. Yes, Bergamax. Bergamax is a special bergamot of bioflavonoids that are found in the inner peel. Unlike all other bergamot products, our Bergamax uses bioflavonoids found in the inner rind uh, part of the plant, of the, of the fruit. And that's really where a lot of activity is. You can find out all about that at brightsidehealthproducts.com, Bergamax. We've got some more products coming up at Brightside Health Products here in the coming, uh, coming weeks, and we'll have uh, guests on to talk about that as well. I got to move on, Rose. Can you? Uh, Let me ask you a yes. question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, forgive me. Okay, I'm, I'm really lacking a vitamin C, and I think part of the, of the issue that I'm suffering is that. Um, another thing, magnesium. I was doing some research, and it says that magnesium orotate 
And it is the type that I need that goes to your cells. Magnesium orotate is definitely a good form of, of magnesium, orotate, O-R-O-T-A-T-E. Colloidal magnesium is good. You'll find that in the, in the uh, Longevity products, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and such. Magnesium ascorbate, if you're talking about vitamin C, you can actually get something called magnesium ascorbate, which is a combination of magnesium and vitamin C, and they do work together. You, because, because of my health situation. Uh, liquid magnesium is probably the best, but beyond I, osteo FX I or in some other li- magnesium. liquid magnesium, liquid magnesium. Oh, it doesn't really. If it's in a liquid form, that doesn't make too much of a difference. Once it's in a liquid form, if you, it, as long as it's in a liquid form, you can use magnesium. I think uh, the beyond osteo FX might be magnesium citrate. I'm not sure. Citrate's a good one too, by the way. Citrate, the calcium citrate, magnesium citrate, citrate salts they call them, are also very well absorbed and handled by the body. So is orotate. So is aspartate. You know, we should talk about that a little bit. The second word after a mineral will tell you how well that mineral is handled by the body. So orotates, magnesium orotate, those are handled by the, that's handled by the body well. Magnesium citrate is handled by the body well. Uh, The ones that are handled less effectively are things like magnesium oxide, magnesium gluconate, magnesium sulfate. Those are handled by the body less effectively than magnesium citrate and orotate and also uh, colloidal magnesium. The best way to get magnesium, Rose, you know what the best way, all-time best way? Eat your green veggies, green okay. veggie juices, and lots I of them. To, in my case, I will have to juice them because, you know, I, I, I lost my stomach, as you know. Okay, thanks a lot. I will Thank you, Rose. You. Okay, God take bless. care, Rose. Have a good Say hi to Steve. Thank you. Have a great That's day. for you. Bye. Take care. Okay, uh, John, what's up, man? John in Michigan, welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, Ben, uh, real quick, uh, uh, a friend says she has high arsenic, and then my grandson is breaking out. He's seven months old with red. They call it Exxon, maybe, but he's being just uh, nursed uh, okay. by his mother. And How old is he? How old is the grandson? He's seven months old. And he's okay, red. food allergies and mom. Number one, mom's food allergies. Got if when mom's nursing and the kid has a skin problem, you're looking at a food allergy in the mom, uh, and then allerg- allergic kinds of chemicals get in the milk, and and then the kid reacts. It could also be a digestive problem. The kid, if the kid is eating, uh, but in your case, the kid is just wean is just being breastfed. Nursing. So th- look at the mom. Look at the mo- the mom is the culprit. You okay. might also want to make sure mom, in addition to controlling her uh, food allergies and staying away from foods she has problems with, dairy is usually a culprit, and gluten can be a problem too soy sometimes. Uh, In addition, have the mom make sure she's getting enough essential fatty acids. Get her on the ultimate EFAs. So her breast milk has these essential fats that are important for building the skin barrier. And then uh, make sure mom is also doing zinc, 50 milligrams a day of zinc, picolinate. That'll get the the kids some zinc as well. And then also make sure mom is getting her fatty vitamins, her vitamins A, D, E, and K. D from the sun, A, D, E, and K. 20,000 IU of A. Have her out in the sun to get her vitamin D. Make sure she's doing a little fish oil also. That could help with her vitamin D. It also will help with the baby. And then uh, E and K are also important, but not like A and D. E, maybe 400 IU a day. And then vitamin K2, anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 micrograms a day. Zinc, your fatty vitamins, essential fatty acids, both omega-6s and omega-3s, by the way. And you'll get those in the ultimate EFAs. And have mom make sure she's avoiding any food allergens or food toxins. Last but not least, make sure mom is using her Biolumin Nightly Essence so the baby's going to get some good bacteria. Uh, Good bacteria, probiotics in the gut are extremely important for skin health, especially if you have eczema. As far as the arsenic goes, think chelation. What makes makes her think she's got too, too high arsenic, John? I don't know. I don't know how she was tested, but she just said she had... Okay, I don't know. That sounds kind of... What about clay? What about Clay's great. Clay is great. Bentonite clay, zeolite, something called NAC, N-acetylcysteine, selenium, MSM sulfur, and vitamin C all have wonderful chelation properties. Coming back with Greg... Thanks, John. I appreciate your call. Coming back with Greg Birch from the Flavors Radio Program right after this break. Don't go away. Back on the bright side... We have uh, we got a guest, Greg Birch, who is the host of the Flavors Radio Program. He's a chef, and he's involved in food manufacturing. We're going to talk a little bit about food with Greg Birch of the Flavors Radio Program on KSCO in Santa Cruz. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, young man. How are you today? Good to talk to you on the air. I didn't get your bio, so why don't you give us a little bit, give us a little, just the short version. Let me ask you a couple questions about about food and flavors and energy bars. I definitely want to talk to you a little bit about energy bars this morning, but tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. 
Yeah, started at an early age in the food, in, uh, food. worked for a caterer when I was uh, just a lad, opened up my own catering company, and that turned into uh, food manufacturing by just kind of a quirk of nature. I did a Christmas party for a well-known uh, um, market chain, and uh, it all started from there. And it went from, I went from my company from just starting scratch, so zero, up to about $14 million a year before I uh, sold right. out and moved up to Northern California. Now, where are you from originally? Los Angeles. Or LA, I grew okay. up in Orange County, did all my, cut my business teeth in, uh, in L.A., and then I uh, moved up here and um, got a little away from the business. And But my wife and I, Marlene, we would do charity dinners. So we still do charity dinners up here, and uh, we always have a lot of fun with those. Now, but, uh, food manufacturing is in my blood. Uh, I, know the equi- I know the equipment. I know the process. And I take uh, food from, you know, from a concept all the way to market, whether it's to your local markets or whether it's the food service, which is a completely different realm, which most people just don't seem to realize. But you're not just a manufacturer. You're on your farm right now. I can hear, I can hear dogs barking in the background. Yeah. So are you actually growing food? Are you growing stuff? No, I'm growing, I'm growing Labrador retrievers. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, not... No, we, we, just, we just bought this property, and it overlooks uh, Monterey Bay. Beautiful, beautiful bay. My wife and I both kind of grew up in the suburbia city uh, landscape, so we wanted the country and nice and quiet. Let me tell everybody, farms are not quiet. <laughs> I can tell. I, but. I hear. I hear it. Yeah. So, so you're not just – you got a radio program, so there's something you want people to know about food apparently, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, our, Marlene and I, we host flavors um, on Sundays from noon to two on KSCO, and it's all about good food, good living, because we always, besides the health issues, which is big, big, big now, um, there's, you know, when it comes to hospitality, there's always a food element, somewhere either food or beverage element in there, and which just turns the whole um, hospitality experience into something special. So we try to promote that uh, through chefs, uh, wineries, cookbooks, and pretty much anything you can think of that has to do with the hospitality industry that connects with food and beverage. Now, it seems to be a, there's sort of like this binary idea about food that it's either good food or it's either it's good food or it's bad food. Like uh, some people are foodies, they love food, they'll eat all kinds of food. Other people stay away from food or have a kind of a, a, this love hate relationship with food. But you can eat well and Oh, eat healthily. You can eat, eat healthily. You can eat, eat healthily too. Yeah, you can eat fantastic. I mean, everything in moderation. I mean, when you're everything, you feeling, everything, Greg, me? every yeah, everything, because there's some crappy food out there. Twinkies yeah, yeah. in moderation. Well, I, well, not everything. Okay. There are there are certain things that you shouldn't be eating at all. Uh, a lot of times when people give me a call saying, you know, I want to take my product to market, and um, I'll see. I'll look at their ingredients and I'll say, oh, you, you can't have that in there anymore." There, there's back in the old days, um, especially like with um, Asian food, you would MSG. have products in there. Yes, MSG, which is just a big red flag. You might as well say DDT these days. They don't call it um, MSG though. They call it natural flavoring, right? Well, a lot of labels will still say MSG on it. Really? Um, you go into your, uh, especially your, your ethnic stores, and uh, I don't know if they have a real problem with it or not, but I know I do. Uh, I, I want to make sure that the products that I put out are the tastiest and the healthiest now that, that you know I can provide. Uh, back in the old days, maybe that wasn't so true. Back in my, uh, I'm in my fifties now. Back in my twenties, it was. Get as much, yeah, that, <laughs> I'd have people say, oh, are, is, are your products low-cal? I'd say, all my products are low-cal. They're all made in lower California. <laughs> the, that was the, the, the running joke. Not so much a joke anymore. As you get older and things pop up, uh, you, you really start taking a, a second look at 
things that are going on now. We're talking about all the way back from the 70s and 80s, where health was an issue, but nowhere near the degree it is now. So what I like to look at is I'll look at a label and I'll see what's in the label, whether or not it's, or not even a label, but their their uh, recipe. And a lot of times they'll hand me a recipe. I say, okay, i got to convert this into a formula. And they'll go, well, what do you mean a formula? And I said, well, it doesn't always um, compute out that if I'm if you're making a little, you know, uh, oh, a pint or a quart of a salad dressing, but now I'm going to convert it into, you know, somewhere like a hundred or two hundred gallon batch at one time. That's a formula, and they don't. It just doesn't convert one to one. It, it, you would think it should, but it doesn't. You sound like a food scientist. You sound you like you're in the say, laboratory making stuff. Is that right? A, a lot of times I will be in a laboratory um, actually putting these things together and trying them out. And, you know, because of my my knowledge and my experience, I'll, I'll say we get very, very close the first or second time out. But for somebody that says, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I knew somebody that used to go somewhere and go, yeah, got it. So what there, What are some there, good – we always – we always hear about fresh food, right? Fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. What are some good right. processed foods, laboratory kinds of foods that you would recommend in terms of, not just in terms of taste, but in terms of health? Your grains. Um, your grains are probably the best, best source for that. You get into, and beans and things like that. You, you, get into, you get into products where, especially like with salad dressings and things like that, your oils, um, can be a good source for health. What kind of uh, oils do you like? What kind of oils do you like? I like flaxseed oil myself. Even for um, processing? Not, Even for processing? Well, you, you're not... <laughs> with flaxseed oil, you're not really process, you know, when I Usually when I say processing, there's a heat element involved. So can um, you heat flaxseed you know, oil? Can you heat flaxseed oil? You can. I don't. Because um, flaxseed oil, like fish oil... Um, with, you know, it's great uh, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids in it. You don't want to... <laughs> fish oil seems to be, from what, I, from what I've studied and what I know, seems to be the best oil to, uh, to consume. But as soon as the fish dies, that oil starts to go rampant. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, break down. Yeah, it starts so, to break down. With the flex, we, with the flex oil, Greg, you got to hold that thought, Greg. We got to take a commercial break. Hang on to that thought, okay? Don't go away. All right. Uh, we're talking to Greg Birch of the Flavors Radio Program on KSCO. Gonna, uh, I'm going to ask Greg about his favorite processed product. That he to Greg Birch of the Flavors Radio Program. Greg is a food manufacturer, chef, and businessman, and farmer now, I guess. Right, Greg? Are you a farmer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I live out on a farm. I, I, I won't call myself a farmer. But All it, right. It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's actually, most of the time, it's very relaxing. But this morning doesn't seem to be that way. Uh, All right. What so I wanted you, to, what I want, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead, Greg. What, what I wanted to tell your listeners was part of the food manufacturing um, uh, quandary that we have for people like myself that do this is that there's always the element of shelf life. We need to make sure that uh, the product it's got to taste good. It's you know it's got to have you know, all the all the benchmarks that we want to set for this product, whatever the product might be. But if it doesn't have a shelf life, then you're the product can't get out on the market. I mean, there's certain things that you can make at home that go, oh, my word, this is so delicious. This should be out on the market. Well, in reality, it probably can't be uh, because, of, because of the shelf life. So how do you, that's one how, of the... How do you balance out preserve, preservation with the need for, for... the problems with preservation with the need for shelf life? Well, uh, in the old days, uh, preservatives... I mean, there were, you know, I would buy my preservatives from Dow Chemical, and oh, uh, scary stuff. You know, a one-quart a one jar back, I mean, we're talking about late 70s, 
would cost over eight hundred dollars for a one quart jar of this chemical, a preservative. What? what do you know what it was? Back, do you, oh, do you remember? I don't do you remember recall. the chemical? Back, back. Uh, I remember we would do five hundred pound batches of dough for rugula, and I would put in like something like three and a half grams. I mean, which is nearly nothing into this huge batch. Anything more, um, it could become poisonous. Anything wow. less, it, it didn't work. So scary times. Nowadays, with the way science has progressed and everything else, we don't need, now I won't say that everyone does it because they don't, they still use preserve, those chemical preservatives. But my end of things, because I'm more of the boutique product lines, we, we, steer away from that. I'm not looking for a shelf life of, you know, a year or two years on the shelf. And, you know, a lot of people out there when you're buying, oh, your spaghetti sauce or your canned goods, um, whether they're soups or even vegetables, um, cereals, those products, <laughs> they're far from fresh. Um, cereals especially. This, oh, yeah. They've got the supply line that just you just can't, especially because American wants their food, you know, for uh, very cheap. So in order to do that, the supply line has to be massive, which is a very slow snail tra trail to get to the, the shelves of the market. What do you mean by so, that? What do you mean by a massive supply line as, as far as cheap food goes? What's the relationship between, first of all, what is a massive supply line? And second of all, well, how does that relate to cheap food? It, it, give you an idea. When we, when we started with our product line, we were buying bags of flour in the 50-pound sacks. And then we went to 100-pound sacks. By the time I was done, I was having, I had silos where they were blowing the flour into the silos on an every other day basis. Hmm. Uh, you're buying your product at the very beginning. You're buying your product uh, by the unit. And then you start buying it by the ton. And then eventually you bought it on contract, which meant, like, I, I was the largest in user of cream cheese west of the Mississippi when I was doing my product lines. And I would buy cream cheese six to eight months early or, you know, before that actual shipment came in. So sort of like the commodity market where you're buying gold futures and pork bellies and all that where you never take delivery. Well, I actually took delivery. <laughs> So you actually you had an agreement with with dairy farmers, and then they would produce cream cheese for you based on an agreement that you made with them to buy so many tons of the stuff. Kraft Foods, um, you know, they were they were the only ones that could actually supply me the volumes that I needed. I was going through anywhere from one and a half to two tractor trailer loads, which are forty foot containers, uh, a week of just cream cheese, thirty pound blocks. They would they couldn't. They weren't set up to make. I wanted the blocks, the fifty-pound blocks, because it would save me on labor. But they couldn't do it. So even that. And then there are two brothers that started the Tofuti company, and uh, we worked long and hard to try to figure out how to replace the cream cheese with uh, to tofu. Or to, and then their product was called Tofuti. Tofuti cutie and, uh, is that is that the Tofuti cutie that ice cream thing the so mm -hmm. tofu ice cream. Yep. That's the yeah. one. I, I think I've had some of that stuff. And they were, they, were, they were trying to manufacture a cream cheese slash tofu type of product for me, but we could never get the consistency down. But these are the kind of things that, you know, we don't – you're going to manufacturers and you're talking to them about your needs, and you're more or less usually – well, I won't say usually, but in some instances – you were on virgin ground. You weren't. You weren't going through their catalog and going, "Oh, I'll take, I'll take some of this." A lot of times, you're going to them and saying, "I know what your manufacturing is like. I know what your capabilities are like. You're not doing this. Can you do this for me? And what's it going to cost at the volume I'm going to give you?" And the higher the volume, which is kind of unfair, but this is the way it works in real life. The more volume you do, which the better your business is the lower your costs become because your raw materials become less and less and less as you're buying more in volume. Um, so the small guy, unless they really know what the heck they're doing, um, doesn't really stand a chance out there as far as going going national. That's not necessarily... 
Is it, that's not and necessarily in the consumer's it, interest, though, is it? No. Well, it depends on what the product line is. If the pro- the the product line for the majority of people out there, uh, I think the majority of people really want to be healthy. Uh, obviously, they don't they don't want to take bad things in there. But then they flip it around as far as what their budget could do for them. And sometimes their budget doesn't allow them to go crazy. Now, on our show, we push CSAs nationwide. Uh, we push farmers markets. We say, listen, gang, you can buy these things. Um, you're going to get a lot better product. And CSAs go all the way from, you know, from vegetables to fruits to meats to fish. You're going to get a, you're going to get it for about the same price as you would going into the market. And um, the the quality, the freshness, the quality, uh, you you get a you get, for anybody out there that's either had a, a had a, a store bought egg versus a ranch egg where you're getting it right out of the, right out of the ranch, it's like wow, this isn't even the same thing. And because the ranch egg, oh, the yolk is just as dark orange. It's just and the taste is just gorgeous. Like mm. Ryan, uh, right right right. Vine ripened tomatoes. Oh, that is a toughie. Um, there's there's no difference in taste. You know you you can't beat it. But in stores, because of their their um, supply line, they can't turn that around. In the majority of the cases, they can't turn that vine ripened tomato around and put it on their shelves and sell it before it goes bad. So. There's the yin and the yang. They they they've got to have it to where they've got to have so much time and for to to sell the product and get it through their supply line that sometimes people are uh, you know they're they're taking you know the the manufacturing what they've done over time as far as figuring out how to you know how to extend their shelf life bananas that come from Central America or South America. You know they're they're green 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 when they pick them and they they ripen as they they go along. Now you find yourself a nice uh, banana or even coconut that's been ripened right on the vine, and you will just you'll just mm-hmm. die with the dif- difference. Big difference. So a lot of things like a lot of things like that. Um, when I'm doing the food manufacturing and I've got a new project going on, like right now um, I'm going to be working on a. Um, um, not a, uh, an energy bar. Oh, great. We're out of time. I wanted to talk about the energy bar, too, and we're just out of time. Maybe we'll get you back on here. Give me uh, what's your favorite product out favorite processed product out there, like in a, that comes in a box or a wrapper? Just one, Greg. Um, well, it would probably be our salad dressing, which is a blend of blood orange, uh, blood orange olive oil and raspberry vinaigrette, and that is delish. And wh- what's, what's your website, real quick? We've got about 10 seconds, Greg. Website is flavorsiseverything.com. Flavorsiseverything.com. Thanks a lot, Greg. Have an awesome day on the farm. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You've been listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more awesome health information. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.